Hey guys, happy Thursday. So, yeah, my hair won't fit in the video at all because it's way too big. So, obviously, yeah. All right, what did you guys think of yesterday's uh, Jesus' uh, Libertine Circle? <laughs> I thought that was pretty intense. Um, I thought it was pretty, you know, perverse a little bit maybe. Uh, maybe for him to be, you know, the almighty, you know, loving savior and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And now we have a lot more new information. So we have Lazarus. We have obviously we have the resurrection of Lazarus coming out of his tomb. Um, so, yeah, here we go. This is I mean, this is I love this stuff. You guys seriously. History is amazing. All right. Lazarus, the youth involved in some kind of ritual rebirth or sexual initiation into the mysteries of the kingdom, had two sisters, the house-proud Martha and the mysterious Mary, also known as the Magdalene. So, it's interesting. Sexual initiation. Hey, it's... Yeah. Anyways, whose character and role have been discussed previously? Obviously, we yeah, already went over Mary Magdalene. So she is mysterious because she appears only rarely by name in the New Testament. Now her identity also being obscured as um, Mary of Bethany. Now, um, a certain woman or a sinner of the town, although any church uh, goer will be quick to describe her as the reform reformed prostitute who forswore her wicked ways to follow Jesus. In fact, her alleged career as a streetwalker was an invention of Pope Gregory the First in six. Wow, what did I write there? 691 CE, based on the biblical description of her, uh, whatever, her sin, her being a sinner. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So now we see where uh, a lot of stuff came into the Bible, why these things are in the Bible, the um, the sins and what these people, you know, because this was a different time, a completely different time, a completely different country, region. So it's very regional. So their rules do not apply to us. I mean, biblical rules don't apply to anybody. I don't think any witch or pagan or, you know, even Wiccans. I don't think that, yeah, none of that applies to us. So now he simply put two and two together, Pope Gregory the first, and yeah, he made five. The original Greek word was um, harmatolos, a term taken from an, from archery, meaning one who falls short of the mark. Obviously, yeah, yeah, one and one doesn't make five. Uh, it, it, Gregory, no, you are sadly mistaken. Now, N was applied to those who, for whatever reason, failed to keep the Jewish law. So, now, one major reason for not doing so, of course, was not being Jewish or a foreigner which I think is very, very racist, especially of the Bible. Now, and this is, I mean, everywhere, the Bible is full of racism. Now, or perhaps a follower of another type of Judaism. So there is evidence to link Mary Magdalene primarily with Egypt and possibly with the ancient goddess called of Ethiopia. Not only did the church vilify her as a whore, but the writers of the um, can canical, canical gospels clearly set out to uh, basically... Um, marginalize her so it's pretty sad that she was turned into such a hero, hero like a you know ferocious like you know street walker and you know all that good stuff so whatever now in the um canonical uh gospel she only really comes into her own at the crucifixion when she um heeds a team of jesus's female disciples who come to uh show their solidarity and love with and for love for their sick or stricken leader when the famous men, um, apart from the young St. John, who fl have fled, she too uh, take the major role in the story of the resurrection. So when she uh, meets the risen Jesus in an almost exact reenactment of the Egyptian mystery plays of Isis and Osiris. Yeah. Yet her abrupt appearance as a significant player in the great drama seems odd until it is realized that she had been deliberately edited out of the story until it reached the point where she had to take center stage. So you see, I mean, the Bible is crap. There's no truth in it besides do unto others as you would have them do unto you and love. I mean, literally, this is just so obscure and it's so grotesque and it's all over the place. You cannot keep track of it. Timelines, biblical timelines don't match up. 
I mean, half the crap that they had back then does not exist today. And half of the maps in the Bible, you know, in your Catholic family Bible, like ours, it, it's perfect. Those are perfect for setting your, uh, like, floor, uh, floor uh, uh, fans, floor fans on. It's a saying. But that none of it matches up. None of it. Now, yeah, she had to take center stage, center stage, perhaps simply because her part of the story in the story was too well known to be out. But why was her role demoted and degraded in this way? What did the um well, what did I write there? What did the writers of the gospels of saints Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have against one apparently harmless and devout woman. Now, many people would answer that men of the early church were too biased um, against an ex-prostitute to permit her to uh, take the limelight, or that they basically still had pre-patriarchal Jews. They were just too sexist. So, yeah, I mean, any kind of, you know, that, the damnation of the female population in the Bible is because of sexism. That's, I mean, that is pure sexism right there. And that is why I really like this book, too, because she's a very feminist. And this makes me become even more feminist. And yes, men can be feminists. So now, in fact, the answer is always or almost certainly rather different and considerably uh, more far reaching. Now, Mary Magdalene committed what to the early Christians made of Judea must have been an act of blasphemous presumption for anyone, let alone a woman who was probably foreign and possibly black. Hmm. Mary Magdalene was a woman of color. Thank you. Thank the gods. We have a black goddess that has arrived. Sorry, that was a little bit Eartha Kit going on there. So, yeah. Now, as noticed previously, racism was not but invented by the British Empire. So, she anoints Jesus. It happened in Bethany at the home of a man known to history simply as Simon the Leper. Probably fictitious. There's nothing that we can archaeologically draw back to Simon the leper. But where did I go? Where did, where did I go, you guys? Oh, yeah. As described in Mark's gospel, quote, a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure spike nard. I want to know what that perfume is. If anybody knows, let me know. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Now, some of those present were saying um, indignantly to each other, why this waste of perfume? Really? Really? It could have been sold for more than a year's wage and the money given to the poor. And they uh, rebuked her harshly. Okay, well, at least we're thinking about the poor. But... In Luke's gospel, the unnamed woman anoints his head and feet and also dries them with her hair. We have a little bit of Judas going on here. Now, but it is, or, but it the men, if the men's objection was intended to provoke praise and gratitude from Jesus, it failed utterly. Um, yeah, it did fail utterly. Instead of congratulating them on their wisdom and concern for the poor, their reader says, the Hemsley. And we will continue tomorrow. It's just, I mean, it, it's getting so sexist and so racist that I don't know if I can continue this, but I can definitely continue on with why it's, you know, completely wrong and, you know, completely obscured and ridiculous. So, anyways, let's do some godly talk because it's been forever. So, as you guys know, my book will be out um, in 2022. And I'm very excited for it. It's going to take me a couple months to edit. Now I have it, you know, in my book format. I have the cover. So, yeah, um, I just have to edit it. So it's going to take me a couple more months. So it'll be like uh, the middle of 2022. If I'm remembering if this is 2021 already. Yeah, this is 2021. I'm like, wait, what is this month? <laughs> or what is this year? It's very different. Okay. Let me see. Where are my comments? All right, uh, Metal Magic and Mayhem. Hello, I love the secret history of Lucifer and can't wait to read her other books. I know she has a lot and I am so excited. I am so excited. The Partial Sun, uh, no, I missed you. I'm sorry, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll be on tomorrow again. All right, Talon, as a vet tech who wanted, or who worked in the reptile house at the zoo, there's a ribbon garter snake, totally harmless and good to have around. I love him, isn't he sweet? Isn't he precious? I mean, he had, a sign, he had something to tell me. It was a she, I think. I really do. I think it was a she. 
All right, Lily Moon, I'm enjoying this so much. I knew he was not this holy do no evil, see no evil, speak no evil being, because as you said, he was in the flesh. So the bird, he's going to have fleshy desires. Your research is so awesome. Thank you so much. Love you back. I love you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if the Christians today really knew what they were worshiping, the God L, it's, it's not, yeah. Anyways, Gustavo, my brother, good video. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The partial sun. Hey, sorry, Ryan. Or hey, Ryan, sorry, I've been um, absent for so long. You're fine. Okay. Um, love you all. I love you too. And I hope it's all, all is well. I just had to take a break from the craft and um, uh, organize myself. Totally understand. No, I totally get it. I remember when I was little, I used to see a bearded face in the tree wherever I was little and its mouth would move and stuff but i remember of it saying that and i'd stare into the woods i knew there i knew things were in them but i never really paid too much attention to them oh yeah pan oh my gosh yeah my story of pan is pretty uh pretty intense so now that i know how to work with him properly i think that was the signal that i you know i was going to be with him for life that he chose me for life i do think that because you know i didn't even know what I was doing and I called on him and it worked. <laughs> Be careful, early. Lady Blind Wolf, I love you to death. You're so amazing. Trying to decide, Talon, trying to decide what I'm going to do on Monday for my 51st birthday. Well, happy birthday. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Uh, Going to depend on the weather, unfortunately. The weather has been so bipolar, tripolar, crazy. Amanda Wilkies, I hope I said that right. Hi, Lady Blind Wolf, Gustavo, my brother. Um, Maria Renteria. Hi. Hello, hello, everybody. Kim Lehman. Ooh, uh, great video, Ryan. I love you. I love you. I love you. Kim Lehman, what in the world uh, threat to you? Wow, what is wrong with people? Yeah, people? I don't know. I don't know. They see what you do. They see that you get, you know, um, good at what you do, and then they get jealous. So that's all I can think of. Corporate coffee futures. Wow. Wait, what? Someone is sending you death threats? No, 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 not death threats. Just the threats of, you know, don't you dare. You know, I warned you not to, um, you know, uh, be rude to, you know, whoever it was. And they were asking for other people to pay for their readings um, consistently. So it was like it was, you know, uh, a troll, essentially. So, all right, Sheila Nagel. Hello, Soul of Thorns. Hi, guys. Shadow Quinn Ernest. Hi, my darling. I love you guys of the way or of the how or why of me truly a holy enigma i am you are amazing i love you careless hi lady blind whistle thorns who else carlos uh colon hello 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 all right guys well tomorrow we will have more information on the mysterious mary magdalene and jesus's inner um whatever libertine circle so <laughs> But all right, guys, I love you all with all my heart, all the way from Venus, always, always Venus, all the way back down. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Please be safe, stay healthy, don't get sick, all that good stuff. And I love you guys, and thank you for the comments. They make my days. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I love you very, very much.